So what we're gonna do here is compare all the pro versions of the Apple M processors. That's M1, M2, and M3. And the first thing I wanna focus on is the CPU cores and how they sort of differ here. You can see between all different versions, you have an eight core, 10 core, 11 core, and 12 core. And they're broken down between performance cores and efficiency cores. You wanna take a look at performance cores as sort of being the cores that do all the powerful stuff, all the heavy lifting, those heavy duty tasks that you need to get done. The performance cores take charge of that. Well, you have efficiency cores and efficiency cores are gonna do all the light background tasks that don't need a whole lot of power to be done, but it's gonna do it effectively, efficiently, with less power, which hopefully saves on battery life, hence efficiency cores. And you can see when you look at all the charts, they line up all differently. And you can see as you go from M1, M2, and M3 Pro that you start to see that shift between more efficiency cores to more performance cores and even to a point where you get it even when you see the M3 Pro right here for six performance, six efficiency. Now we can also quickly look at the CPU clock speeds. These used to be a really big thing back in the day. Uh, it is important to have good fast clock speeds, but it's not as important as how many cores you sort of have these days, depending upon what apps that you're using. And you can see on the M3 Pro, you can get up to four gigahertz on the performance cores in terms of how fast it can go, up to 2.75 gigahertz on the efficiency cores. Now understand that's how fast it can go go. It's not running at that speed the entire time you're using your system or you really wouldn't have as much battery life. It's just that when an app or a service needs to push up to that peak performance, it has the ability to go that fast. What I think is actually more important to focus on is on the next section here, which is memory bandwidth, memory bus width, your RAM speeds, and your memory options. Okay, why is that? It's because everything you do in your computer pretty much runs off of RAM or memory in this instance. Everything runs in there. When you load up an app and anything Thing you're working with in the app, it's all running through RAM and communicating to all the different components on your computer. I'm simplifying this here, but that's basically what it sort of sort of kind of works with here. And it's really important to have as, as much bandwidth and, and fast transfer speeds to be able to communicate with all different components because using a unified memory architecture, your CPU, your GPU, and other components share that same memory bandwidth and that same memory all within one section. Again, simplifying this down here a little bit, it's supposed to be more efficient and, and this case is with that. Now, when you take a look here at the M1 Pro and M2 Pro, you can see that they have a memory bandwidth of 200 gigabits per second. That's how much data it can sort of handle at a time. And the memory bus width is 256 bit. That's why it can have 200 gigabits of speed. And you can see the estimated RAM speeds of 6400 make it transfer a second. Basically, how fast it can send data up and down memory and all your other different components. And that's how fast it can send that bandwidth of 200 gigabits per second. That's how fast it can kind of move everything around. Again, simplifying things here. But if you look at the M3 Pro here, you can see that it's actually 25% less than 150 gigabits per second in terms of bandwidth, with because it has 192 bit bus, but the same sort of mega transfer speeds but that's kind of a thing here we want to pay attention to because it really depends on the type of apps you're using that might need a large bandwidth to be able to run really really fast or run effectively because it doesn't matter how fast your clock speeds are on your system it doesn't matter how fast the uh, the ram speeds are you are still limited by your bandwidth and that's something that's hard coded in you can't just snap something and just kind of open up more bandwidth there and apps have to optimize for it as well too so if you use something like i use video editing using large files you probably want as much bandwidth as possible to make sure that you can interact with those files within your application and other different parts of your computer nice and fast and not have too many delays with it. It doesn't matter how much RAM you have. You can have up to 96 gigabytes of RAM. That just basically means that's how many apps you could run within RAM, how much stuff you can put in there. But in terms of how much you can transfer over it and how fast you can do it, it really depends on the memory bandwidth. Now, I'm not saying here that the M3 Pro is a worse processor because it has less memory bandwidth. That's not the case here because it depends on what you're using. You might not need all that memory bandwidth depending upon your specific needs. What this is all about is understanding the differences between all of them and seeing what key features or key specs might be best for you. Let me know which one you think is the best for you. I, I like them all personally, to be honest with you. My M1 Pro has been great for me, but you can take a look at the differences here and see which one is the right one for you. Let me know in the comments if you have one of these already. How's your experience been? What are you using it for? What type of creator are you? If you are a creator, you might be doing something <laughs> completely different. I know me as a content creator in the video space, I love my M1 Pro. That's 10 cores. It works perfectly for me. You might have some differences with that. That might be a little bit different for your sort of needs. I really am interested in that. Let me know in the comments below.